All right, so looking out at the attendees list, I see a lot of new virtual faces. So in case we're new to you, uh, Dyn365 Pros is a Microsoft partner. Our consulting practice focuses on Dynamics 365 for customer engagement and everything it touches. We implement and support your system so you can concentrate on creating new and repeat customers. Um, now I'm going to launch this poll. Should take just a couple of seconds to display. Uh, we're curious how many of you are actively looking at a marketing automation solution versus those uh, just looking to learn about solutions in the marketplace. And I'm going to give you another hmm, 10, 20 seconds to respond, then we'll get started. All right, so about uh, two thirds of attendees are looking at uh, marketing automation in real time and one third here to learn. That's great. OK, now I am going to pass the presentation rights over to my friend Nate Kiefer from Click Dimensions. So hold on just one moment. Nate, you should see presentation rights now. Yep, let me know when that pulls through on your end, Mark. I can see your screen. It says agenda at the top. Okay, looks good. Appreciate the introduction. Um, and you know, this is just gonna be our, our quick agenda, you know, rough outline here for today's webinar. You know, um, what is marketing automation? Why is it so important today? And you know, really, giving you the tools and questions needed to, you know, select that on your end with eight key questions to ask. Um, final thoughts, and then we will go into our live environment with Dynamics 365 and click, click Dimensions installed natively inside that, and then we'll have a couple minutes at the end for Q&A, and then I'll flip it back over to Mark uh, for final thoughts and next steps. But um, just to kind of touch a little bit more about what Click Dimensions is and what we're all about. Um, you know, we're a, a campaign automation, you know, full marketing suite of, you know, solutions and products that is actually built inside of Microsoft Dynamics 365. So, you know, um, you're going to access our features through your normal login credentials for Dynamics CRM and access all of our features through the normal interface that you're used to with Dynamics. So we're also fully supported on our end, you know, with um, help training support onboarding services um, after the fact, as well as uh, Mark and his team are, you know, certified on our solution and can handle all those services for you as well. And, you know, we've been around almost 10 years now and we've always been 100% exclusive with uh, Microsoft CRM. So we've never been available as a, a standalone solution offering and or, you know, have a integration into a competitor's CRM. So um, first and foremost, you know, what is marketing automation? You know, marketing automation features can really vary, um, you know, by platform to platform, but um, these are ours and some of the common features you might find in a solution as you're evaluating different offerings. So um, we've got email marketing, of course, covered, event management connectors, social marketing, so you can post to social platforms right from within Dynamics 365. There is a campaign automation builder, which is drag and drop functionality. You can also push through SMS or text messages through the system, form surveys, landing pages, web intelligence, customizable lead scoring, and then the reporting side of things is also all handled right from within um, the normal Dynamics CRM reporting engine. So whether that means spinning up you know, custom dashboards or you know, regular charts and graphs, or even integrating into your Power BI instance, those are all you know, natively connected right from within Dynamics. So you just do that like you normally would, and then all of the Click Dimensions data points are gonna be um, you know, tied to that. So you can you know, spin those reports up as needed. Um, you know, the internet and social media have really changed buyer behaviors, which is, in turn has changed how companies market and sell 
So with all this info, you know, re so readily available, buyers are really now in more of a, a power position than ever before, and they really expect more relevant, personalized, and timely communications from their brands. So we've just got a couple key takeaways here from some from surveys and some marketing data that we have. You know, 89% um, of customers are still, you know, um, beginning their buying process with uh, a simple um, search engine as far as seeing what's out there. Uh, it takes an average of 10 marketing-driven touches to progress a lead from the top of the funnel to a revenue generating. And then, you know, 79% of marketing leads still, still never do convert into sales. So and the, uh, the key takeaway there is the lack of lead nurturing is the most common cause. And we're going to show you how to, you know, execute those with click dimensions here today. So why is marketing automation so important today? You know, marketing automation technology really allows companies to meet those expectations by nurturing prospects until they're ready to make that buying decision and, you know, really better engaging existing customers and aligning sales and marketing, all while streamlining, you know, marketing processes and tasks for greater efficiency and decreased revenue streams. So, you know, 80% of marketers are using automation software and, you know, um, Typically, um, the key use case scenario is to generate more leads, so that's a that's a big big one there. And then you know, companies that have implemented a marketing platform really are achieving higher level higher levels of collaboration between sales and marketing. And what we're going to show you um, with our native integration with Dynamics CRM, um, you really get the the dual visibility to both sales and marketing teams, so everyone will have you know access to all of the different areas between both departments so there isn't going to be that disconnect we're going to really show you how we tie those two departments together and then you know the, the growth aspect to uh, as far as getting ahead of your competitors can really be done with with the campaign automation and marketing tools so next thing we're going to touch on is you know really selecting a solution for Dynamics 365 eight key questions to ask so, um, you know, so how are you going to decide on which solution might be right for you as an organization that utilizes Dynamics 365? These are going to be the key, you know, hitting points that you need to ask as you evaluate different vendors. So first one, does it include the features your organization needs? Marketing automation solutions are really capable of much more than just email marketing, as you saw on our feature slide earlier. And they're really going to include a, a very wide variety of features, you know, such as, you know, uh, campaign automation, where the system's going to go to work for you, web intelligence and tracking, forms and landing pages for, you know, lead gen. You've got survey integration, um, social integration. So you really need to take that time and think about, whether the solution you're considering includes all the tools your company needs, not only for current marketing, sales, and, you know, customer service, but, you know, you want to keep an eye out for, you know, what your future roadmap looks like, too, so you're covered as the, as that comes, you know, up as you um, continue to grow. So while your org might not be using, you know, SMS um, messaging, for example, today in the present day with your marketing efforts, it's really something that you should be considering for the future. So make sure you, you know, choose an automation solution that can grow with your company's needs um, in the marketing realm. Secondly, is it easy to implement and use? Well, it's imperative that, you know, a marketing solution, automation solution will have that robust feature set that you're looking for. Um, it, that's what's going to make it, you know, really powerful and versatile. The system can't sacrifice simplicity for functionality, right? That's the, that's the, the number one objective, right? So if your daily users of your marketing automation tools um, find it difficult to use, they won't use it, right? So we want to make sure that we're working around it to, you know, have a simplified solution so everyone's on board and, you know, working all together. A system that's not user-friendly also is going to defeat one of the main purposes and benefits of marketing automation, which is um, time management, you know, saving that time. Similarly, you know, if a solution is difficult to implement in full or in part, your org is also unlikely to realize, you know, the true maximum ROI of, of, of implementing a marketing automation solution. Third question is, what are the options for training and support? So even with the most user-friendly systems, um, there's going to require some, you know, initial training for new users to get up and running, right? So um, really take a look at the training offered by the vendors you're looking at. Different users have different ways of learning and different schedules, of course. So make sure you're keeping an eye out for a, a vendor that offers a variety of training options, which would include live webinars, recorded courses, help articles, blog posts, et cetera. 
Similarly, you know, the support should be offered in different ways to suit your company's needs as well as operating hours. So this not only would demonstrate that there is help available when you need it, but also would ensure that you can get started and get results quickly and easily. And with Click Dimensions, we like to tout that, you know, um, from your initial sign off, you know, to the purchase order um, with our onboarding and our uh, partner assistance um, with Mark and his team, you can typically, you know, be um, ramped up and trained via the self uh, the self training e learning portal that we offer, as well as our our blogs and you know knowledge base that's you know free and customer facing online to actually executing that first campaign, you know, within two to three weeks time, pretty comfortably. Fourth question, does it integrate well with Microsoft Dynamics 365? So while some marketing automation platforms can be used without being connected to a CRM system as a standalone, uh, the integration between the two solutions is really gonna maximize your power, effectiveness, and value of each throughout an organization. So there are many marketing automation systems on the market today that integrate with Dynamics 365, but their level of integration is definitely gonna vary between them. The level of integration can really impact the cost and timeline for implementation, as well as the overall functionality and performance. So Click Dimensions is the leading marketing automation solution for D365, and with our fully native integration, it's not only going to eliminate the need for you know syncing systems, but it's going to really deliver that unparalleled access to your CRM data from day one out of the box, so you can have you know better segmentation, personalization, and maximum success. Five, how often is the system updated? So consumer behaviors and preferences are going to change over time. So to be successful, the marketers must adapt to those changes. A marketing automation platform should really evolve with the changing needs and use cases of marketers. So you really want to be sure to look at how often each system you're considering is updated, and not just with fixes for uh, problems that may come up, although those are also important too, but vendors should really regularly be adding new features and also improving upon existing ones. So ask the marketing automation providers that you're working with and considering whether customer requests you know, actually help drive product updates, You know, because while this uh, doesn't guarantee that they will grant your requests, it does demonstrate that they are putting the customer needs first and that's how all of our you know feature requests are handled with click dimensions too we've got an online um, feature request form that you fill out and that's going to connect you with support and then you know all of those feature requests are handled um, based on popularity and we actually have a, a new solution file that comes out essentially monthly it's every four to six weeks so you know there's always new stuff coming down the pipeline and then um, you can take a look at our product roadmap moving forward to see also what else is coming in the next, you know, six to nine months, one year out, et cetera. And you have um, some visibility to that on our end as well. So six, what reporting and analytics capabilities does the system provide? Marketing automation reporting was once, you know, really evaluated on whether it could help marketers make smarter decisions, but marketing automation isn't just for marketing anymore. Um, the solutions today should really allow for smarter business decisions and insights, you know, across the whole organization, not just the marketing team. So, you know, look at not only the reporting and analytics capability, you know, that are available in the solution, but also how easily that data and intelligence can be accessed throughout an organization, and particularly those in sales, customer service, and executive roles. So, you know, while marketing automation just isn't for marketers anymore, um, a, a really nice feature with Click Dimensions is going to be that, you know, essentially everyone who has login credentials to your dynamic CRM environment will have full access to all Click Dimensions features and visibility to everything across all your org departments. So, you know, that's also a part of our initial setup and onboarding is that, you know, there's a whole set of rules, permissions, and settings. So, you know, if you want to make certain individuals and or teams, um, you know, only privy to certain features and or functions, you can do that. And also within those features, you can also, you know, pick and choose who has the ability to, you know, not only um, view things, but read, write, and actually execute sends and or um, campaign automation, you know, executions. Um, so, you know, you can also set up like an approval process. So if you have like a, an initial uh, a power user or things that, you know, people um, have to sign off on and approve before they're executed and they, that they roll up to, you have full customization options with the setup um, internally with the reporting and all the backend capabilities with click dimensions.
So seven, what is the cost? You know, a cost is always, you know, a big factor when, you know, making these decisions. And, um, you know, when properly implemented and utilized, a marketing automation platform really should pay for itself, you know, many times over in time. So the price shouldn't, you know, always be the most important consideration when evaluating solutions, but we understand that it's always going to be a key factor, right? So um, you want to make sure you're looking at the overall value of the offering. What do you get for the price that you're paying? You know, be sure to look at overall costs, including if there are fees for setup, training, you know, CRM integration, additional users or contacts, connectors, um, syncing, and many other, you know, other miscellaneous items that may come up. So with these extras, sometimes what appears to be the most affordable solution, you know, at the initial, you know, price point can actually be among the most expensive. So make sure you ask all the questions and, you know, if there's fees for setup, you know, all these other areas and get the full story and proposal before you actually, you know, um, so you get that true apples to apples comparison between your solutions you're looking at. Eight, does the provider have a good reputation? So, you know, when investing in the marketing automation solution, the com your company isn't just purchasing a piece of technology. The nature of the system really does require that you have an ongoing relationship with the vendor. So you want to make sure that it is a provider worth having a relationship with. Be sure to seek out customer testimonials, online reviews, ratings, etc. If your company is working with a Microsoft partner, for Dynamics 365, seek out their suggestions too. So with their expertise and experience on the Dynamics side, they can really provide you those valuable insights into the marketing automation solutions that are going to be best for Dynamics 365 users for your specific organization. So um, lastly, you know, as the popularity and um, importance of marketing has increased in recent years, so has the, the number of, you know, solution providers. So this is kind of just a snapshot view of, you know, all the offerings that are out there, you know, within, you know, the different areas, you know, content and experience, social relationships, um, CRM, you know, specifically, you know, ERPs, you know, affiliates, commerce, sales, data, you know, it's a just a massive slew of options that are out there and we want to make sure that you're educated and you know making the best decision because you know obviously one marketing automation platform is not going to be a one size fits all but we want to make sure you're asking the the questions that's going to find the best fit for your organization so i'm going to pull up my um my Dynamics 365 environment now, and we're going to show you some of our features in action with Click Dimensions um, natively installed within Dynamics 365 in my cloud instance here. So um, this is what we mean by you know the native installation, right? So we've got our Dynamics 365 environment here. You've got your you know sales, marketing, you know portals, voice of the customer, whatever you're subscribing through for your Dynamics 365, you know, subscriptions across the top here. And then um, Click Dimensions gets natively installed with this little drop down or button bar here as well. So this is going to be where you're going to access all of our features. We're also going to be natively, you know, embedded right side by side. You know, most of them live and breathe in the marketing tab here. So you can see you get, you know, leads, marketing lists, campaigns, some other limited features out of the box with Dynamics 365. But, you know, this is where the, the Click Dimensions feature sit right alongside there. And we integrate with these out of the box features. That's really where we shine is expanding on those out of the box features. So you can see all of our red icons here are click dimensions features that sit right alongside there um, in the marketing tab. And even if we would go into settings here, for example, we've got you know all your out of the box Microsoft Dynamics settings and then your click dimension settings sit right alongside there. And then all of our features are accessible you know through this tab here. So it's segmented out nice and neatly for you. So you've got email marketing, um, web content and analysis, which would be your forms, your surveys, um, landing pages, and then your web tracking and visits. We've got our campaign automation builder. You can schedule those social posts to LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn, Google+, Twitter, and Facebook, and Instagram right through the, the Dynamics engine. We've also got event management connectors. So if you want to run online events through um, GoToWebinar, um, Eventbrite, Cvent, and a couple others um, for also with your, you know, in-person events. Those can be connected through the event management settings. Um, bulk, bulk text messaging is also an option. So um, Twilio, Bulk SMS, and MessageNet 
If you have a third-party account with any of them, you can connect those and run them right through our system. And then these are going to be, you know, the related entities that are going to be, you know, pulling through as you're individually in your leads, contacts, or accounts within your CRM. So you're, you're literally going to be able to get that holistic view of, you know, all of your engagements with your um, leads, contacts, or accounts. So, you know, every email that's, you know, ever been sent through to them, you know, did they open it? Um, how many clicks did it, you know, it turn out to? Um, did that lead to any web engagement activity on your um, org's website? Um, you know, forms submissions, survey submissions, their um, posted preferences and subscription settings you know you're also going to be able to see you know all of their web page views um, where did they come in from you know was it via an email that you sent to them was it um, through a, a Google search or did they originate from maybe one of your social posts all that data is going to pull through as well as all of their posted forums and you know surveys um, what survey questions were asked what were answered etc this is all going to pull through when we drill into like a, a contact record for example the second part of our native integration is going to be, you know, um, on that reporting side too, and how the look and feel of all of our feature set goes. So it's it's designed to mimic the click um, the Dynamics 365 page records as close to possible. So what we're looking at here is, you know, um, a couple of our um, dashboards that come out of the box. You know, this one's highlighting, you know, email event analysis. So you know, it's tracking all of our you know active sent emails you know were they delivered uh, did they get opened did they result in a, a spam you know hang up or uh, an unsubscribe from a marketing list and these are all the active ones that are flowing through your system um, clicks on your website too and then you know the, the account contact or lead you know as far as you know um, who's interacting with those and again we'll we'll drill into one of these contact records here in a, in a second and show you all the areas but you know all these dashboards you know this one comes preloaded we've got another one that you know um, talks more about the analytics records so this is going to be you know more on the web tracking side of things you know um, who's out there you know from what IP orgs you know looking at your website materials all those active visits um, the page views how engaged they are and then you can see here this customizable um, lead scoring is integrated to that due too as well so you know we've got these scores that are tied to each individual and you know as we drill into one of these again we'll show you what that holistic view of their you know web web journey is and how engaged they are with your um, website so a couple of things we're going to show and, and feature here um, you know we won't have time to show you our full slew of options today but we're going to look at um, first and foremost uh, an email template and you know how that gets um, created and sent out and then um, also we're going to look at a campaign automation build and then, you know, look at a few of these um, email sends as far as, you know, the tracking data that comes back in real time into your org. And then if you want to schedule, a, you know, a side um, full demo to see all the other features we don't get to today, you can schedule that through through Mark or myself moving forward. But um, what we're going to look at first is um, we're going to look at one of these um, email templates. So if we were going to build out a new email with uh, with Click Dimensions um, and Dynamics 365, we would click on this new button up here, and then this would populate here. So you're going to type in the name of your email, you know, the subject, um, a pre-header if you want one. But you know, this is going to be the different editing types that we have. So there's a, a drag and drop style editor, you know, very simple but easy to use and super powerful. We've also got a freestyle editor, which is a little bit more hands-on. You do have the optional ability to edit, you know, the source code and HTML with that. And then we also have a full-on, you know, 100% control of the code custom HTML um, custom HTML editing option too. So, you know, whether you're using, you know, different options with your existing templates, we've got an import wizard where you can uh, bring things into the, the freestyle editor, or you can, you know, cut and paste or, or rip and replace your templates via the, the source code and the HTML and bring them in that way too. Um, you know, the projects are also going to have these searchable tags, right? So think think like a, a hashtag searchable system within your database. So if you want to, you know, tie these to, you know, different categories or verticals, whatever the case may be, you can search for them and retrieve them down the road. The quick send template is going to be if you want to make this template available at the individual one-to-one -one level to be sent through. So as you're individually working within a lead, a contact, an account, or an opportunity, and you want to, you know, just send this out um, individually to that person, you can do that quickly and easily. So you can make this available as what's called a quick send option, toggle that to yes, and then you're going to type in, you know, the record owner 
name, user and or email alias um, from who this template is going to typically come from as your org uses it over and over again at that individual level. So, you know, you're going to set those up, tie this to your campaign within CRM, and, you know, then it's good to be going uh, as a quick send option. As we scroll down here, you're going to see, you know, this is where we're going to go into our editor here in a second. But you've got that visual, you know, HTML preview that you're looking at here on a typical template. Um, if you make this available as a text-only version option, that's also going to populate in this iframe here. So you can make changes in here, hit that Save button, and then this will refresh um, your changes in real time. Scrolling down, we're also going to show, you know, the notes section. So just like a typical Dynamics 365 page record, this is going to be where you're going to, you know, type in your notes relevant to the project. If there's any files that, you know, need to be attached, you know, um, for whoever's um, creating and working with this, you can tie those in here. And or if you maybe have a, a permission setting, you know, where you have to um, send this to um, an admin or an approval, you know, process that you want set up before they actually execute the send. You know, that's typically where we would see those in here. And then you've got some admin, admin, you know, only options down here at the bottom for views. And scrolling up, we're going to drill into this editor and show you what this looks like and kind of play with it a little bit. Um, but another thing I did want to highlight is this cloning button, right? So within any click dimensions, you know, um, creation piece, whether it is a a template for email that we're building out, like in this instance, or maybe you're working with uh, a form or a survey or a landing page or a campaign automation view, for example, you know, you can clone any of these entities, right? So that essentially what it does is you take a cut and paste of that entire project, um, name it something new, and then you know you can use that moving forward. So for minor changes, a great example of that would be your, your newsletter, right? So um, a monthly, um, a monthly, you know, template you're going to send out to a marketing list over and over again, you know, throughout the course of the year. You're going to build that out once, you know, kind of create that, you know, master look and feel for that newsletter. Clone that so that you can just, you know, take out certain panes or, or blocks moving forward and drop in the new data that you want to be presented, you know, month over month. So um, that's a cloning option there. So when we look at our typical, you know, um, you know, drag and drop, you know, creator here with the, the template wizard, you know, this is going to always going to be what um, all of our, you know, creation pieces look like. You're going to have your, your workspace over here on the left-hand side, and then you're going to have editing options on this right-hand window where you're either going to be, you know, making selections like you are here, or with these elements, you're actually going to be, you know, dragging and dropping these, you know, um, between the two environments. So, you know, if we want to drop in some social links there, maybe we want to put in, you know, some sharing options, you know, you can do that, right? So um, looking up here at our, our templates here, this is where you're going to start with, right, and choose, you know, a basic layout. So um, you can choose from any of these pre-built out layouts. We've also got some featured templates here that are, you know, kind of pre-built out of the box. So you can, you know, start with something that's already built out and make some changes on that and use it, use it moving forward. And then once you start building these out and saving them, you know, this is going to be where all your template library is going to be accessible through, you know, through this little, um, you know, template some um, feature up here. So a couple other things I want to highlight here, you know, again, it's all drag and drop functionality, but then once you have your, you know, pieces in place, you drill into the, you know, the pane that you want to make um, edits and changes with, and, you know, this is going to be, you know, where additional editing options are going to populate on the right-hand side. So for here, we've got, you know, our typical, you know, body of our message here, right? So um, we want to use some dynamic content in here and really, you know, um, make the system work for you, right? So I'm going to have this... Um, hello started here and then when I drill into this personalized tab you know you're going to be able to pull from any of those data points within your dynamic CRM world so you know from the contact the lead or the account them so let's just go um, contact and then we'll do um, contact and we'll do full name so that's going to pull and you know add this in for personalization and then you can see this drops in this little script or code cookie so that's going to automatically pull the full name from the contact level within your CRM so you really get that personalized look and feel when you're sending this out to a marketing list or a group set of leads contacts or accounts a um, couple other options to, to highlight here you know if you drill into like um, one of these images for example you know um, if you want to you know um, edit that image there's a photo editing suite that's built into the system if you want to you know replace this with something new um, this is an internal image manager where all you can load in all of your marketing you know files um, 
that are in logos and pictures and collateral that are going to be you know relevant create custom folders and this is a, an internal you know searchable database that gets saved within your dynamic CRM storage so you can quickly and easily have everything right at your fingertips and bring in new um, images and then put them as needed if you want to make anything an active link you click into the link manager and then you know you type in the, the URL you want that to get mapped to quickly and easily um, or maybe you wanted to make this available as like a um, not only an unsubscribe but you know like a, a subscription management piece too so if you see here down at the bottom we've got this um, link down here that says click here to unsubscribe or to change your subs subscription preferences so you know we can utilize that so if you have you know, um, active marketing lists that people are opting in and, and or out of on the regular, like a, a newsletter uh, monthly or quarterly, or maybe you've got blog updates or uh, product updates or, you know, things that people are subscribing to. Um, this is going to open up in a pop-up view and uh, that's tied to our form builder. So, you know, that's going to build out this little form where they can check box and opt into those lists and or out from those lists and or it can be uh, an unsubscribe you know, to this specific uh, marketing list and template or a global unsubscribe. You have all of these different, you know, personalization options with that as well. So a couple last features on the, the drag and drop editor here. If we go up into this um, test and preview option, you know, we're going to look at the, the preview here. And, you know, this is going to show you what this um, template looks like preview wise on a desktop view as well as a mobile and or, you know, tablet or phone style device. Because as you know, people are going to be, you know, opening it up on both and a variety of different um, devices. And then the last step that goes even on next level a little bit deeper is going to be this inbox preview option. So if we run an inbox preview on this, this is going to show you what that template looks like and renders at on a whole bunch of different, you know, um, different, you know, environments, right? So once this populates, you're going to see, you know, mobile, mobile style um, email clients, desktop email clients, as well as, you know, web-based clients. So then, you know, the whole kind of idea behind this is um, the next thing we're going to show you is going to be, you know, once you actually send through an email, you're going to get all this data back in real time, right? And you're actually going to see what percentage of the marketing list or group set of, you know, leads, contacts, and accounts you're sending this materials out to is opening it up on, you know, um, is it going to be, you know, 70% up on, you know, Outlook, maybe you've got a big chunk of your audience opening things up on, on iPads, for example, or maybe, you know, it's um, one of these web-based clients. So you can go, you know, next level and, you know, really like drill into one of these and see what it looks like on these, you know, particular devices. So you can, you know, go next level before you actually send that back out to, you know, the the next um, the next time you do that to your marketing list. It's also going to pre-check everything against these spam filters, right? So you can see here it's got about a dozen or more different spam filters it's running against. And then, you know, ideally you want to see all these past um, green pass codes across the board, right? That's going to be your success, you know, that so it shows you're ready to send things through. If there is something that's going to hold this up in, you know, a, a spam or a junk filter, you're going to get a red fail code with a message, which is going to tell you, you know, exactly what you need to make changes on on that template so it renders, you know, properly and avoids the junk and spam filters before you send it out. So that's a little bit on our, you know, basic, you know, um, drag and drop creator. What we're going to look at next is going to be, you know, some of the data that flows back in real time, right? Once you actually execute that send. So we're going to look at emails here and I'm just going to pull up, um, you know, a sample newsletter that we sent through to a marketing list of a, a couple hundred here and we'll show you, you know, what that data looks like. So this is going to be one of our sample newsletters that was also, you know, um, created in the drag and drop wizard. So if I scroll down and you're ready to execute a email send with our system, you're gonna click on this new and this is gonna be the, the top of the page here. So you know, you're gonna um, select the template that you saved and built out and you know, that's one, this is gonna pull through and it'll show you, you know, the editor type that you used to create it and you've got this visual preview and this iframe over here. All of this data is gonna pull through based on how you saved it, right? You know, your subject, your pre-header, if it's tied to a campaign, who it's coming from, you know, a record owner, a user, a name, or an alias, or any combination of those. And then, you know, you can manipulate these after the fact, you know, based on if it's something different from when you saved it. So, you know, maybe when I originated it, I wanted it to come from marketing, but now I want that to, you know, come from my individual alias. You know, you can change that before you actually send it. 
You can also have a, a separate reply to email uh, versus where it's coming from. You know, so maybe they're coming from marketing at your org.com and you want all those replies to go back into my own personal inbox so I can follow up individually with those. You know, you can manipulate little pieces like that. For deliverability options, you're going to have, you know, the option of um, once you have all your settings aligned, save this immediately, and then there's going to just literally be a, a big blue send button right up here. So you hit your save up here, and you send it right from within Dynamics. Um, if you want that to be pushed out at a future date and time, that's also an option. So you would toggle this on to no, and then you're going to be able to select, you know, um, a custom future date and time timestamp down to the minute, you know, with custom time zones as well. As far as when you want this send to get executed, you can also, you know, um, have a test email. So, you know, if you want to um, put in your own alias in here, but again, before you actually send it out to your big marketing list, just to, you know, make last minute, you know, previews and changes, you can do that. And then it'll send one, one copy to you before it goes out and sends it to everyone else. Your recipients are going to be, this is where you're going to drag in, you know, your, your marketing list, you know, from, from your Dynamics 365. So these can be static and or dynamic marketing lists or a combination of the both. You know, they can be originated from the lead or the contact level or any combination, or you can drop in individual leads and or contacts in here or any combination of these items. So that's going to be the audience that it gets sent out to. Um, again, if you want to make that available as a text-only version, that's an option. And then um, we've also got some additional options with um, Google Analytics campaign tracking that's um, included, as well as tracking those email events. We've also got a split test wizard. So if you want to compare like uh, two sub two subject lines, you know, versus each other, or maybe uh, it's coming from a, a marketing alias versus a, a personal alias, or maybe you literally want to compare two complete templates side by side next to each other and see which one performs better and then you know select the winner after x amount of uh, minutes or hours and you know um, push out the the you know the remainings to the winner you know based on either unique opens and or clicks are going to be options with that so scrolling back up you know um, this is one that we've already pushed through so it's an inactive you know read only file that you see down here at the bottom so once it's in that status you know this has been sent um, you know, you can refresh this if it's in the process of being sent. This is going to be the stats that pull through in real time, you know, as this is being executed and sent through. So we've got, you know, your email sent, your delivers, your bounces, your opens, um, clicks, um, unique clicks, unsubscribe, spam, you know, all of this at a high level. And then to go deeper into this data, we click on this email statistics dashboard um, for statistics. So, you know, um, as we click through these top tabs here, we're just going to walk through real quickly, you know, um, what each one of these, um, you know, little um, areas um, means and, you know, um, the data behind there. So this was all displayed on the previous one, the general overview. So um, if you want to drill in deeper, you know, you've got your email clients here. This is going to be, you know, what, what devices and or, you know, um, OSs are used to open up uh, and view that materials. And again, all of this data can be clicked out just like it normally could be with all your data points within Dynamics 365 if you want to export this out to a uh, like Excel or Word or CSV file. Um, I'll come back to this one. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to render. But, you know, conversions is going to be, you know, it's going to, it's going to tie together, you know, everyone who's visiting your website and or submitting a form or a survey, and then all of your web visits are tracked and tied to the leads, contacts, or accounts that are viewing those. We've also got a click report too. So everywhere, everywhere there is a clickable link within that, you know, template you're sending out, um, it's going to show you, you know, how many unique clicks were tied to that link and total clicks. And then you can drill into these too. So if I want to, you know, see, for example, who's actually clicking on these links, maybe you've got one link that's a little bit more important that you want to dig into and, you know, take next steps with these individuals, like add them to a marketing list or, you know, drill into one of these individually and see how engaged they are. You know, you can do that. And this is the live link to their contact leader account and then how engaged they are. Your recipients tab is going to be simply, you know, everyone that, that this was sent out to. So you can see this is a 171 individuals, live links to their lead contact or account. Was it delivered? Was it opened? How many times? How many clicks? Or did it bounce? Your heat map is going to be a visual overlay of everywhere there was a clickable link on that template. And then you know it's going to show that percentage of your audience that clicked on that link. If you have social sharing turned on too, this is also going to track, you know, all the individuals that are clicking on those social share links too. So it's going to literally tell, you know, there were um, 10 shares on Facebook, there were, you know, seven shares on Twitter, and then it's going to populate those lists with live links to their leads, contacts, or accounts. 
down here and it'll literally say, you know, Nate Kiefer shared this on Twitter with a timestamp record down to the minute of when that, you know, event took place. So you can, you know, really um, see at a level, you know, and again, you can add all these individuals to marketing lists if you want to, to take next steps with those individuals. But, you know, it's, it's literally going to show you who's out there sharing your messages and engaging and, you know, really evangelizing your messages across the various social platforms. So that one was rendered air it looks like so you know that's going to be you know creating a template and then actually sending it out through the system um, one last piece i want to definitely cover with our time together today is going to be the campaign automation builder and um, i've got one of these queued up as far as you know uh, a typical you know um, you know um, three week you know nurture or drip campaign with our campaign automation builder that you can quickly and easily build out and this is really going to tie together all of the use cases of click dimensions and the features right so what we're looking at here um, your red icons are going to be your triggers so when an individual submits a form or a subscription or a survey maybe registers or attends an event or maybe they interact with an email or they're getting added to a marketing list within CRM or removed from a list um, or you can simply do a manual ad where you you know drag and drop that in so Select your, you know, group set of, you know, leads, contacts, accounts, and or marketing lists and build something out like this moving forward from that. Those are your typical triggers that are, you know, as used as an entry or starting point for these builds. Your blue icons are going to be your action items, right? So sending an email or an SMS, um, adding them to a list based on a trigger activity, removing them from a list, um, assigning an owner within CRM, notifying that user within CRM, creating a task activity for someone in CRM to be completed. Or you can, you know, literally um, work with your existing CRM workflows too. So, you know, maybe if... Um, um, you've already got one of these built out and saved in your Dynamics instance, and you want you know that to take place at any given point. You drag that in, connect it where you want it to be executed, and then you drill in and your editing options populate here. So you can select and search for the workflow that you already have saved, and you know you can get that executed as well. So it's kind of taking the place of the workflow process but you can still in integrate those existing ones. Um, and th these go a lot deeper too, uh, based on you know these builds. Um, so this is all drag and drop functionality, you know, actually building out those um, CRM workflows. It goes a lot deeper with a lot of, you know, if when scenarios and, you know, um, you can go a lot, you know, deeper into some, some different areas, but um, you can use those two in conjunction is the key takeaway there. And, you know, the yellow icons, are going to be your wait timers and date timers right so wait x amount of you know hours minutes you know days weeks before the next event takes place or um, you want that a next event to actually happen on a you know executable date and time time stamp down to the minute with custom time zones so to quickly walk through this um, you know say you've got an ebook you know um, a form submission on your website embedded with our click dimensions form builder right so uh, that's going to be our entry point for this example it's tied to the campaign within CRM and then we're selecting you know the form um, that's out there sitting so once they fill out that form you know there's a decision node to uh, once they hit that submit button you know based on you know um, some of these scenarios for this example if the lead you know address equals um, US East they're gonna get put into you know this US East bucket so if we drill into that you're gonna see, you know, on the back end, once they hit that submit button on that form to download some collateral off your website, for example, an ebook, you know, we can assign that individual to a sales um, team and or individual, notify that user to take next steps, um, put in a wait timer of two days, and then this automatic, you know, email where we built this, um, you know, industry spotlight, you know, um, with our, can our, our click dimensions, you know, um, drag and drop editor, that's gonna be all saved and ready to go. So they're gonna get that after two days of hitting that submit on the form. So what's gonna send them down the, the, the positive or negative path in this scenario is that initial email they get, we're gonna drill into this. And then, you know, um, did they interact with that email, right? So you can either, you know, select um, custom links. So if they click on one of these links that you wanna see, you know, manipulated, you know, that can send them down a path or simply if they open up the link without, open up the email without clicking on a link, that can, you know, be a trigger and send them down a path. So you have options there. Um, what could send them down the negative path, you know, within two days of no non-interaction or by a specific date set and time, you know, you can have them go down the negative path. So if they interact with that in bit, that first email, you know, the, the key, you know, um, end result here is that they get engaged with our sales department. So again, our notify it on um, user experience happen and then the, within dynamics uh, create phone call activity is going to be created for them to take those next steps 
if they don't interact, you know, what's going to put them into this negative bucket after two days? Um, Two or two or three week, you know, nurture a drip style campaign here, where you know after two days time they're going to get a secondary email from us. If they interact with that, you know, again, instantly they're going to get in, engaged with sales. Um, if there's zero interaction, you know, after X amount of days they get a third email. Same scenario, a wait timer, and then a fourth email. And then you know, um, week two is very similar. At the end here, if they, you know, at any given point, this one has seven emails that could hit each potential, you know, lead contact or account. If they interact and or open, whatever you designate, at any given point on any of those, boom, they get engaged with your sales team to take next steps. And then, you know, if they make it through the whole, you know, process with no interaction, you know, they're going to get put into this end nurture bucket where we're going to be adding them to a, a new marketing list. And then you're going to designate, you know, what list you want that to be populated to. And then again, the notify user activity is going to happen. So, you know, whoever owns that is going to get a notification. So maybe we've got this, you know, um, um, marketing list of these folks that you know were non-responsive via you know email um, you know seven emails where no one got you know response um, let's tackle and go after them on a different you know form of media right so we're gonna drag in a date timer and then on a specific date and time we're gonna you know hit them up with an SMS or a text message and see if they get responsive that way so you're gonna literally drill into this type up your SMS uh, tie it to the campaign and then you know that'll get executed when you when you tell them to. So you know that's kind of the the campaign automation builder in a nutshell. Uh, we've got about five minutes here, so I'm gonna. Um, Mark's been gathering questions for me, I know. Um, so we're gonna you know stop there, um, and then um, we'll handle some of those questions. And I'm just gonna pull up you know our our feature set here while we do that. Okay. Hey, that was great. All right, I do have some questions here for you. Uh, first question, can you describe the licensing model for Click Dimensions? Yeah, great question. So it's uh, the licensing model is gonna be you know, tied to your, it's a, it's a single solution file, so there's only one file to be created and managed. You know, um, it's gonna get custom created to your uh, Dynamics instance. And then you know it's a it's a it's a SaaS offering subscription model. So um, essentially you're, you're you're purchasing to to rent that license, so to speak. But it's a it's a one year annual commitment. And then you know um, we do have multi multi year options as well. But that's the kind of the the commitment option is a, a 12 month annual commit. And um, our pricing is out there on clickdimensions.com slash pricing. This is public facing. Um, if you purchase it directly through us or Mark and his team, you know, typically can, you know, bundle this with your CRM services as well if you're if you're purchasing those at the same time. Uh, great. So the next question is about deployment options. So I'll take this one. There are a couple of, you have a couple of options. We want to make sure that you're successful with click dimensions. So we don't want to just have you install it by yourself and then left and be left on your own. So we've uh, got a couple of options for you. One is basic and another is advanced. Um, the basic is $2,500 and the advanced is $5,000. Um, so there's a little bit uh, of difference in what you get, but even with the basic, you'll be up and running on Click Dimensions. It'll be installed in your Dynamics 365 instance. You'll be able to send email templates and do some of the basic stuff. And then of course, advanced uh, covers that and a bunch more. So um, we can follow up with that information details with you a little later. Um, by the way, you will be receiving an email, a follow-up email tomorrow uh, with a recorded version, assuming the recording works, a link to a recorded version of today's presentation that you can rewatch if you've gotten busy or even share with a colleague. All right, so another question, uh, GDPR and uh, the upcoming California data laws, you know, changes to that. So any comments on that? So yeah, we're, we're already GDPR compliant and our team is, you know, following, you know, very actively um, the new California laws are coming and as soon as, you know, um, that's all put in place, um, it's our, um, you know, understanding that we're going to be compliant with that as well. You know, we, we have gone, customers in over 70 countries across the globe you know so we really have a, a you know a huge team that's dedicated to make sure we're compliant in you know not only every country but every state's particular um, so yeah we're definitely aware of those new laws coming in California 
Okay. Well, we are running out of time, so I am going to just go ahead and um, allow uh, for follow-up post-webinar. So you'll be receiving, uh, as I mentioned, a, uh, a follow-up email with our contact information. So we'll be happy to uh, respond to any questions you have. So if you want a one-on-one -on -one demo, uh, pricing estimate, et cetera, we'll be happy to take care of that for you. And if I've done this right, you should see um, our contact information on the screen. Is that visible, uh, Nathan? Yep, I can see it, Mark. Okay, great. All right, so thank you so much for your time today. Um, we thank you, we know you're busy. Uh, so you have a wonderful rest of your day and we hope to hear from you again. Thanks so much.